Hello friends and welcome to my studio. I'm your friend Momo and today I am making a frame bag. One of the top trends for uh, handbags this fall is frame clutches. They're very ladylike and they're super easy to make. So, so in this video I'm going to show you how to make one by yourself. It's a very simple project. You can make it with a luxurious material sequins or you can just pick up any fabric that you have lying around. The frames are super easy to find. You can just order them on Amazon. They're not very expensive, under 10 bucks. And all you need is just a pattern. And I'm gonna show you how to make the pattern. It's a very simple project, so follow along. And I'll show you how it's made. Let's get started. So I headed over to the Chanel website. Frame bags are definitely a trend this season. They are larger, roomier, and more functional. At the same time, they're embellished and more whimsical in nature. The bag that I chose for my inspiration, it is velvet. It is about 11 inches by six inches tall, and it has definitely some room. I wanted my bag to be at least the same size as the Chanel bag, the same shape, which is rounded at the bottom, and it should be able to fit my phone with room to spare. So I started looking looking through my fun fabric stash and I selected this embroidered vintage fabric and it matches with the frame. It is large enough and it has a nice uniform circle embroidery pattern. Let's get started with making the pattern. So you start out by marking the outside of the edge of the frame. This is how large your fabric should be once you are ready to insert it into the notch of the frame. You mark about half an inch of adjustment outside bottom edge of the frame. Measure out how much fabric you have and figure out how tall you want your back. I just used my imagination to extend the shape down. I'm making this taper downwards and I'm making a rounded bottom. So to make the other side of the pattern, I just folded the paper on the center line and mirrored the pattern on the other side. So I just drew the seam lines and that is how my pattern was completed. Mark the center of the fabric that you're using and cut the fabric in two. While I was cutting the fabric, I realized that I could extend the height of my bag by cutting and attaching the fabric from the sides. And I used my pattern as the guide for that. I just moved the pattern up a little bit and then cut around the sides. And then I would just attach it and make a larger pattern. Before I did that, I had to choose the lining fabric. I chose this brown fabric. I already had this in my stash. So I pinned the pattern to the fabric and cut around it. Now, at this point, I realized that I had some more room to extend the bottom of the bag. And now I had a front pattern, which was a little bigger than my paper pattern. So I used this larger front piece to cut the other front piece and the lining pieces. I had some lining fabric left over, so I folded it and cut the shape of a middle partition pocket. I wanted this pocket to be large enough to hold my phone. So I used my phone as the guide. And as you can see that it fits perfectly. I drew the seams on the lining to stitch exactly where it should be to fit inside of the frame notch. So this part is really important. You have to make sure that the size and the shape of the fabric pieces should exactly match with the notches of the frame.
I stitched the pocket shut and then I stitched the lining pieces together. At this point, I realized that I should have left a 2 inch gap in the bottom of the lining. Once the front and the back pieces are going to be attached, I need a 2 inch gap to pull the right side out later. So I ripped out the stitches and I made a 2 inches wide hole in the bottom. I folded the bottom seams together and roughly measured the gusset of the bag about an inch and a half or so and then I stitched it. Then I turned the bag lining inside out and the lining is now complete. I marked the pattern lines on the inside of the front pieces and I overstitched the joined pieces of the front of the bag with a zigzag stitch to make it look neat and seamless. Then I trimmed the edges and stitched the front pieces together. So now I have the front and the back pieces of the bag. At this point, I'm going to apply gems to my bag. I just got this uh, big bag of gems from Joanne for 10 bucks. I tried various options for the color combinations that I had and I picked this red and pink gems as the main colors and the white gems as the accent color. A word about the gems, the ones that you see here are the flat back ones that you attach with the glue. You can choose to get sew on gems or crystal gems or Swarovski gems, whichever ones you like. I'm using E6000 glue for this project. E6000 is an industrial strength glue and it dries clear and it is good with plastic, ceramics, fabrics, anything under the sun. The bond lasts a while so I wanted something very sustainable for my project. I don't use glue guns, I always do something that would last a long time. Applying the gems was the favorite part of this project for me. The hardest thing about working with flat pack gems is that they're super difficult to pick up. The best part of working with the glue is to pick it off of your fingers later. It is so satisfying. Anyway, my bag is now gemified. So as I was waiting for the glue to dry, I was visited by this sweet bird. His name is Bimo, as in Bimo from Adventure Time, remember that? Anyway, so when Bimo yeeted, I was ready to assemble the bag. So this part was a bit of a mind bender. The Mobius loop problem of the bag universe. Outside is in, inside is out, but outside is also out and inside is inside. So remember that we left a 2 inch slit in the bottom. What you do here is that you put the right side of the lining with the right side of the facing. And you stitch it exactly on the lines that you drew on the pattern. Once you have the front and the back stitched together, Remember that we left the 2 inch opening? So you put your hand inside and you pull the right side out from within that opening. I'm doing this off camera but that is exactly what I did. Once I'm done, I'm going to just go ahead and stitch that 2 inch opening closed. And then I'm going to put the lining back in the bag. 
and I'm going to give the seams a good press to make sure that the structure of the bag which is now complete is ready to go inside the notch of the frame. To attach the fabric to the frame, I put some E6000 into the notch of the frame with a skewer and then I push the fabric into the notch with a sharp object. At this point I realized that the glue is too wet and it's not going to hold the fabric so I used a basting stitch to hold the fabric until the glue was dried. The frame I use has tiny holes to stitch the fabric to the frame. You can choose to use a contrasting thread or the same color thread as the fabric that you're using. In my case, I wanted it to be secure and invisible, so I use a transparent thread. So here it is, my gemified frame bag. I am super happy with the results, you guys. The gems look amazing. This is one of those bags that are going to stay in my closet for a while and the color combination is so versatile that I can use it with many different outfits this fall. I am super happy how this turned out. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this project, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I will be posting new videos pretty much every week. If you happen to make this project, be sure to tag me on Instagram. I would love to see your project and how you made it. And I'll see you guys next.